Okay, so I've put a definition for, for what it means for something to be a function up here on the board. Um, this is, uh, let's say, an informal definition of what it means to be a function, um, but uh, it, it works for our purposes. In other courses, you might see more careful, more precise definitions of functions, uh, perhaps in a course on, on discrete math, um, or, or a course on introduction to proofs or something like this, you might see something more careful, more precise. Um, but the, the main ingredients in, in what it means to be a function, and, and here our function is, is f, okay? The main ingredients are, well, you need to have some sets, okay? So a, b, these are sets. Um, what does a function do? A function takes every element, and we should probably underline the word each here, um, a function has to go through every single element in the set A, okay, and it has to assign it to some element in the set B. And one of the rules for what it means for a function to be a function is that any particular element of the set A can only be sent to one particular element in B. So if you have a function where, let's say, let's say 4 is an element of your set, you can't decide that you want to assign the number 4 to three different things. You can only assign it to one particular value. Okay? Um, this, is, this is the defining property of a function. If you relax this rule, if you allow for something in the set A to be associated with more than one element in the set B, you no longer have a function. You have a more general object called the relation. And relations, again, are, are interesting mathematical objects and something that you might study. Uh, but it's unlikely that you will see that in your calculus course. Relations, again, are something you might see in a proofs course, a discrete math course, um, probably not in your calculus course. Um, now, there are, there are a few other things that we can add. Um, one of the ways that you might denote the fact that this function goes from a set A to a set B, you might write this by saying, I'll write F for the, the letter that represents your function, and a colon, and then A, arrow, B. So you'd read that as you know, F goes from A to B, or F is a function from A to B. So there's, there's this sort of dynamic point of view when you have a function that, that there's inputs that are being transformed into outputs, right? So in these basic examples that we had here, right, the X that you see here, that's your input. Right, that comes from some set A, and over here is your output, right? So this, this whole thing here, that's going to be your output. Um, now, in, in these examples here, these ones which are, are coming from sort of, you know, high school pre-calculus, if you like, um, chances are your input and your output are both real numbers. In calculus, inputs, outputs, they're always going to be real numbers, right? And, and for functions like these, any real number will do, right? This expression makes sense for any number. X can be any number, right? Doesn't matter what that number is, it always makes sense to multiply it by three. Whatever that output happens to be, it always makes sense to subtract two, right? Any number can go, right? The rule in this case is this instruction, right? A lot of people think of the formula as the rule, right? But really the formula there is the output. Uh, the rule is this instruction saying that whatever the input was, you should multiply by three and then subtract two. Um, right? But we don't want to have to actually say that every time. This is why we develop mathematical notation. It's a lot simpler uh, to just write down the formula than it is to express that rule in words. Okay, a um, few other bits of terminology before we move on. The set A, um, so the set from which the inputs come, this is known as the domain for your function. The set B is known as the codomain. Okay? Another way that you, might, that you might represent this function process is you might have a little diagram that's something like this. Here's my A, here's my B, and again we draw an arrow to represent the fact that things are coming from A and going to B, and if we want to say that F is the rule that's, that's doing that, we can write something like that. Um, so this is another notation that you might see. Uh, unfortunately, in calculus, we tend to kind of gloss over some of this. We don't necessarily use this notation. We usually don't specify the sets A and B uh, because those sets are always going to be subsets of the real numbers. And so 
In calculus, we get into this habit of letting the formula define the function, right? Um, but the formula is really only part of the definition. The domain, the codomain, those are parts of the de definition. Uh, this is something that will come up later when we talk about inverse functions, right? Uh, when we talk about inverses, we need functions to be one-to-one. -one. Um, something like, like this function here, it's not one-to-one, -one, um, not everywhere. Uh, but if I, if I shrunk the domain, if I went with a smaller domain, if I didn't use all real numbers, I could shrink this down to something that is a one-to-one -one function, right? Uh, we know that the graph of this is a parabola. If you just took half the parabola, you'd have a one-to-one -one function. Um, so there are, there are concerns like that that do come up from time to time in calculus, but most of the time we're a little bit lazy about this. And again, we'll, we'll talk in another video about how we make sense of domain in the context of calculus where we never explicitly write down these sets A and B.